in the wish path, and it leads to war. Good evening, and happy happy holidays from Maestro Cotella. Today we have, have a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite modcast, a 2v2 on Median Cliff Mines. Our first player is Newt Newt, playing as the Eldar Warlock, a melee hero who can also tech spec into spell casting. His first teammate, or really his only teammate, is Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple, which I believe is the name of an X-rated uh, Dr. Seuss musical. He is playing as the Plague Champion. A ranged hero who can heal, support re with repairs, and uh, all that stuff. Their opponents! First of all, we've got the 10,000, playing as the Space Marine Force Commander. This is a tanky melee hero who can knock things down with Battle Cry, who can also support with buffs with Battle Cry. And finally, we have Retro Eye, playing as yet another Eldar Warlock. All right then, it's been a while, guys, and uh, I know it's yeah, it's been a while. I've been uh, a little busy with my new job as a fourth grade teacher, getting up there in the years, about to turn well, fairly soon, uh, going to turn 30 years old. Makes me wonder what you guys are like. How old are you? Where are you in life? What do you do for a living? Feel free to say so in the comments. Of course, I know you probably aren't here to talk about your jobs and your life. You're here to watch some Dawn of War Two Retribution. So, the Warlock right here approaching. Now, the Warlock as a melee hero is definitely less tanky than the other melee heroes. Um, I guess what works here about him approaching is that there wasn't a whole lot of ranged fire to focus him down. But there was still enough to focus him down eventually. Uh, but not after a little bit of approaching. This is quite an interesting fight where we've got Dire Avengers in heavy cover. And so are the Chaos Space Marines, and they're being supported by Heal Worship, but there's a lot more DPS coming out of the Dire Avengers, and eventually the Chaos Space Marines move back. That was not a good time to bring the Warlock back in here. And now the Dire Avengers are out of heavy cover, so that ends up being well played by Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple. I was really interested in seeing it, how that would play out. And Retro I had the right idea of staying in the heavy cover, um, he should have taken advantage of that time to move one of those three squads back to actually capture the VPs in his favor. I did not really approve of him moving forward into out into the open and continuing that firefight against Chaos Space Marines supported by Heretic Worship, uh, Nurgle Worship of all things, which will heal them. This should be a dead power node right here. Uh, there should be enough DPS. Maybe we're gonna see. Ooh, we're gonna see some howling banshees. Not a whole lot to counter the howling banshees yet, aside from maybe some focus fire. So looks like we are just gonna see the blue team move back. And the blue team overall has seemed a little bit smarter about that so far, uh, knowing when to stay in, when to move back. Meanwhile, on this side we have the devastator marines setting up. Uh, should allow the red team to get a generator bash. They will suppress the Banshees from Newt Newt that are approaching, and that should allow the rest of these Space Marine units to continue this generator bash. S the Shotgun Scout Squad, if anything, should get even closer. Get even closer, because they'll do more damage up close. Um, yeah, and he starts moving them closer, as well as we have the other Tax Squad, the Tax Squad, as well as the other Scout Squad, continuing to bash. And looks like they've got, so far they've gotten one gener generator, they've gotten a node. We're seeing another shotgun upgrade, which I don't know if it's entirely necessary. It seems like a little overkill at the moment in terms of dealing with the Howling Banshees or even the Warlock. I mean, here's the Warlock. He, no. This is not going to work. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea there was he was hoping to tie up the Devastator Marine Squad. Um... I guess it was enough of a distraction that he was able to get the grenades on the Devastators. This still doesn't seem to be working out quite in the blue team's favor in this particular engagement. Or is it? I'm totally wrong, and we're just going to see a full mass retreat. I think Better Micro could have possibly saved that in, in that situation, but you know what? That's just how it happened. We've also got the Blight Grenades upgraded from the Plague Champion. Interesting upgrade at the moment. 
Meanwhile, what do we got going over on over here? Howling Banshees upgraded with the aspect of strength are bashing generators on this other side. So it looks like the blue team or the red team getting the better end of the generator bashes. But here is the answer from the blue team. Can they even get one? No, it doesn't even get one. Have to fleet a foot out of there uh, as soon as the Devastator Marine Squad started opening fire on them. The red team having much, much better luck with their generator bashes. Chaos Heretics, unfortunately, they're going to be able to do nothing about uh, the uh, Banshees approaching them. But now the Banshees are pursuing a little too hard. They might lose a model here. They probably should lose a model. Um, especially if we saw a little bit of a faster reaction had these Chaos Space Marines get in their retreat path and force melee them. But that didn't happen. Still, overall, I would say the red team looks like they're doing... They're definitely getting the better end of the generator bashes at the moment. And we're seeing a lot of Banshee chasing going all across the map. Looks like uh, Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple is, should get his own um, victory point back. And looks like he's also going to go for a generator bash. Does have the Havocs to support it. And if he just sets up right here, uh, covers that firing arc right now at the moment, I don't think Retro Eye should really be able to do that much about it. So should be able to complete the generator bash. Um, we do see the attempted repair to stall it out. But then the Dire Avengers just come under too much fire from the Plague Champion with his damage over time, Bolter. Uh, and they do get forced out of there. Ooh, oh, wow. The, ha the Havocs are actually set up a little further back. Um, they could be set up closer. Um, and then they would suppress all of these Dire Avengers coming, coming close to them. Wow, look at that it's infection spread. We're going to see any of these models go down and retreat. And that was really interesting. Oh, there's a model. There's two. Um... Because originally, that Blight Grenade, that like barely even hit one squad. It barely hit one squad. Uh, kind of just on the edge of the grenade explosion. But that was enough to infect that squad. And since that squad was so close to the other two, um, it infected the other squads as well. Here is the flank from the Howling Banshees. This is actually pretty bad for, for Newt Newt. The only consolation would have been if he could have finished off the Warlock, but he doesn't manage to do that. Instead, I think we should see the dire, the Howling Banshees. Well, it looks like there's going, they're going for a squad kill. I don't think they're going to get it though on the on the Havocs. I think a better, they would have had a better chance going for the Plague Champion. Did they finish it? They did finish it. Okay, I'm wrong, and that actually ended up paying off. Um, it's funny because Howling Banshees. At one point in the in the life of Dawn of War II Retribution, uh, and still in in uh, retail or vanilla, um, Howling Banshees are ludic ludicrously good retreat killers. It was th they were god tier when it came to their ability to kill on retreat. I mean, not that there there were other squads that were good at it, but Howling Banshees were just so ridiculously over the top with their ability to kill on retreat. Uh, and at one point in the Elite mod, uh, finally, someone actually decided to nerf that. <laughs> finally nerf that. Um, but it looks like they still have some retreat killing potential. As they were still able to chase a Havoc squad all the way back to base. And, I mean, you're probably wondering, like, wow, it, was it really nerfed then? And the answer is yes. They, those, those Havocs would have been killed much, much earlier with either vanilla Howling Banshees or Howling Banshees in an earlier version of Elite mod. Now, part of what's really tough for Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple is that he doesn't really have much to control the Banshees. Um, and he, he got the grenade launchers on his heretics, so that he basically traded up the, the melee heretics, which are one form of control. He had the Havoc, but then he lost the Havoc. Um, and then even then, Havocs are have traditionally not always been that strong against Banshees. I mean, certainly if you get the suppression off and, and then you have the Banshee suppressed, then, then you have a job well done. But... It, it's, um... Basically, the Eldar have, have ways of disrupting them. And then if the Banshees can even get into the range of the Havocs, it can be devastating. Uh, as, as you saw, because the Havocs no longer exist. Anyway, we've got the Blood Crusher out on the field. That will definitely be a significant counter to Howling Banshees. Blood Crusher will just do major DPS to the Howling Banshees while only taking minimal damage in return. Uh, the Blood Crusher is 
We'll see how well it works, and typically the blood crusher only lasts for a certain period of time. But right now is right now it's it's actually pretty much at the well, I was gonna say the perfect stage of the game for the blood crusher. The perfect stage of the game for the blood crusher is actually when you have a tech advantage, you're in tier two and your opponent isn't, and the blood crusher is just completely uncounted. Um, that's not quite the case. <laughs> Retro Eye is actually skipping tier two and going to tier three. Which is I think a bold maneuver and getting Seer Council. I don't feel that's a strong purchase to go, especially to jump all the way to tier 3, though. That's basically going to tier 3 to get slightly stronger Howling Benches. And I mean, maybe not slightly stronger, maybe they're, they're more than slightly stronger, but they're, they're basically, they fill the ex more or less the same role. Um, very, very similar unit. So, I don't really agree with that choice. I mean, I guess maybe if he's got both the Howling Banshees and the Seer Council, and they just kind of swarm the Blood Crusher, um, they might actually take a bite into it. My god, more Blight Grenade doing work. Blight Grenade actually removing one of Retro Squads. So unfortunately, he hasn't been good about splitting his squads so that he is not getting all three of them infected by the Blight Grenades, because those Blight Grenades have been killing him. Literally. Or killing his units, literally. Meanwhile, here comes the Space Marine Dreadnought from 10,000. About to upgrade to the multi melt Interesting. Typically, the Assault Cannon is uh, much more common. And, and for good reason. The Assault Cannon gives you long range, uh, g great long range DPS, and allows you to keep stay safe and stay very, very far away. Uh, multi melted Dreadnought can still be good. We even saw right there with the way it blew up models. It does uh, very nice burst damage with each shot, so it can gibbs like single models just with a single shot. Um, but it does need to get a lot closer, so it really isn't as safe as an Assault Cannon Dreadnought. Um, it does have better versatility because now you can actually use it against vehicles. But I think because of the f because of how much less safe it is than an Assault Cannon Dreadnought. That's why you don't really see it anywhere near to the extent that you see the Assault Cannon. More Blake Grenades. Looks like the Seer Council had the Distort Field active, uh, a global from the Warlock that gives damage resistance to a targeted squad. And that actually is allowing the Seer Council to get out of there without losing any models whatsoever even at only about a third of their hit points. Meanwhile, Warp Spiders are here from Newt Newt. Uh, probably got them... Well, I mean, he's got the aspect of the Warp Spider. I mean, it's a typical typical answer when you need to deal with the vehicle as Eldar, since their setup team does not snare. So the Warp Spider is... One of the only ways of snaring with Eldar, the other main way being in Eldritch Storm. Um, and the Eldar, the Warp Spiders are a good squad in general, just a high DPS range squad, and they can teleport. Uh, not quite as, generally not considered as strong against Space Marines as they are against other races, but I mean, it's still, you still need that, that AV snare at times, uh, and their damage is still very, very high. So. In fact, yeah, I mean, they're definitely going to struggle a bit with the Stern Guard veterans out on the field. Stern Guard veterans are definitely a counter to the Warp Spiders, so the Warp Spiders are going want to want to stay away from them. So when, then, what the 10,000 should do is part of his main protection detail for the Dreadnought should be the Stern Guard veterans. The Stern Guard veterans should not be too separate from the Dreadnought. And of course, it also needs a, squ a scout squad by it to uh, repair it up as well. Wow. So we see another tier 3 purchase. Newt Newt with... No, I'm kidding. Let's see, it's Retro Eye with the Decan. Now again, he, he rushed to tier 3, but I don't feel like... Like, if you're going to rush to tier 3, I think you should do it to get a Fire Prism. I think that's... Yeah, I mean, out of all the tier 3 units... In fact, in my opinion, out of all the tier 3 units that Eldar have, that's the only unit worth rushing for. Um, because the Avatar is too expensive, and by then you're not actually rushing the Avatar. Uh, and then I don't feel that the impact of the Seer Council or the D-Cannon is something that, um... 
is hard to to deal with with tier two answers. And basically, I th I feel like most tier two armies can can deal they can deal with seer council. You, how do you deal with seer council? You use, you use shotguns, um, and they can deal with with D cannons too. I mean, D cannons have extremely long range, but if you just move up a little bit closely, get a jump squad in there. Um, yeah, the, the the fire prism would definitely be the hardest thing to deal with. Plasma Dev going in and knocks over the Warlock. The Warlock has only the Merciless Witchblade. I don't think that... Oh, wow. Okay. We do see a Ranger Squad out on the field that managed to use their Kinetic Pulse. Actually got the Warlock around. Wow, I did not think that was going to work. Uh, especially with the amount of hit points the Warlock had left. But that allowed him to win that engagement. Uh, Warlock with no other upgrades other than the Merciless Witchblade. Now, disadvantage there. He's got a pretty powerful weapon, but he's still pretty soft. Um, especially considering considering now we're in Tier 2. He might want an armor upgrade to increase the Warlock's staying power in melee fights. Let's take a look at Retro's Warlock. Retro's Warlock, on the other hand, has gone for much more of a spell casting uh, than a melee damage build. And I mean, that doesn't mean he'll never get in melee, especially when, he can, when he's got the support of a squad of Howling Banshees and a squad of um, Seer Council. So, I mean, this is ending up being kind of tough to deal with because it's it's a pretty powerful melee blob. Like, not the certainly not the tankiest melee blob, but in terms of the damage it's going to put out, it's going to be pretty ridiculous. This Warlock is, needs to get out of there. He's got the Warp Throw as well as the Emulator. The Warp Throw could especially be pretty powerful because if he can just warp some units into um, into him then or into like the seer council and the banshees then the that could be the end of that squad warp throw being just an extremely powerful um, extremely powerful ability does no damage whatsoever but you know i think classically or just displacement abilities tend to be extremely extremely powerful And I think Warp Throw is probably a little bit more practical than the game's other main displacement ability, the Sigil of the Rift, or the the Sigil of the Rift from the Sorcerer. Sorcerer bias, but I do think the Warp Throw is a bit more, a bit more practical. Force Commander here, fully upgraded Artificer, Power Fist, and the Teleporter Pack. <laughs> Teleports out of there as soon as he finishes, you know, safe play. Finish that Generator Bash, then teleport it out of there, and uh, he's still alive. So, Generator Bash. Yeah, I feel the red team has definitely had the way better end of the Generator Bashes. Um, that's why the both blue team players are in Tier 2. Um, they're both in Tier 2. They are actually a little low on resources or a little low on army. You know, to triple whipple nipple slipple credit, he has managed to keep this blood crusher alive. Although a big part of the reason he's kept the blood crusher alive is that Retro Eye hasn't really been building good counters to the blood crusher. He got Seer Council, he got Howling Banshees, he got a D cannon. Honestly even the fire dragons aren't gonna be that great. I think especially for like the walkers, that's when you really need you really need that, uh... You really need that Haywire. You know, in part because the Blood Crusher does have that charge ability, it has an escape mechanism, which keeps it alive many times. Basically, if it's not, um... If the Blood Crusher isn't... dealt with using some kind of snaring AV, um, a competent player who, with good micro should be able to get it out in most situations. But, I mean, of course... Usually players will get the snare, and they will snare the Blood Crusher, and then the Blood Crusher is usually dead in the water. It's going to need a lot of support, uh, a lot of commitment from the rest of the Chaos Player's army. The plan has changed. Our howling banshees have housed their last. Let's see if another Banshee model, model will go down in retreat. That is the Stern Guard veterans. Um, they do a lot of damage over time. We're going to see some kind of call-in. Terminators. Yeah, Terminators. 
Terminators, immediately upgrading to have an Assault Cannon. So there'll be some heavy range DPS coming out of 10,000 uh, between Terminators, Stern Guard Veterans, and some very tanky range DPS. VP is actually very even overall. Of course, the, the power has not been... Uh, Newt Newt is struggling a lot in terms of resources. He's been pretty wreck starved for much of the time, probably using whatever wreck he has just to reinforce his existing army. So he's probably losing a few too many uh, models on squads. We do see that um, Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple is often getting overwhelmed by these Howling Banshees. Um, he does have the heavy bolter turret, and I think that's the main thing that's that's preventing him from getting pushed back all the way to his base. But my god. Wow, I don't know why the, the Warp Siders... Okay. I was going to say they should have teleported after the Seer Council, maybe gone for the wipe. Um, forced melee, then kept doing their range damage. But we saw the counter offensive uh, from the 10,000. So he was probably just trying to get away from that. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, Newt Newt's Banshees were trying to chase down the 10,000's Devastators, but they weren't able to finish it off. I feel like Newt Newt may have lost something recently. Probably a Dire Avenger squad. We have the potential for two grenades in retreat. Throws them exactly on the same spot. Kills two models. Probably should have spread out the grenades. Um, better chance of getting more models and possibly wiping the squad. Meanwhile, this could be a wipe on these Dire Avengers. Still no, though. Thought I saw the potential there. I don't know if I was wrong. No, I definitely wasn't wrong if it got out of there with one hit point. Wow. So, Newt Newt and Triple Whipple Slipple. Whipple and Nipple Slipple. Triple Whipple Nipple Slipple is now in Tier 3. Newt Newt is not there yet. I don't know if he even is going to want to go there. He's got barely enough resources to even get out like another Tier 2 unit. Which he probably should get. I mean, off the Plague Champion uh, now has been upgraded to have a melee build. He does have the Plague Fist as well as the Armor of Pestilence. Looks like the Armor of Pestilence has been changed a few times since I last checked. Looks like it doesn't grant quite as much... Um, doesn't grant him quite as much health, but he also doesn't get as big of a movement speed penalty as he used to. Wow, these Banshees are probably dead. Yeah, those Banshees gotta be dead. And those are Banshees for... Whoops. Those are the Banshees for Newt Newt. So, blue team really starting to hurt. Uh, it does feel like the red team... Certainly, the red team straight up... Right now, they are winning. They have the bigger army. They have the BP lead. They have the resource advantage. Triple Wiggle Nipple Slipple does have a lot of resources banked. Uh, might be. Oh, I was gonna say maybe saving up for a great unclean one. Instead, he's going for a chaos predator. The predator is a good choice at the moment, uh, given the composition of basically their opponents, the ten thousand and retro eye. Uh, the predator would be relatively uncountered until, of course, um, the red team buys counters to it. And I mean, they certainly have the resources to counter it. <laughs> And the Wraith Guard is actually a potential counter to um, to a Predator. Predator would need to be extremely, extremely careful around uh, Wraith Guard. Wraith Guard just doing massive burst damage. Wraith Guard definitely a noob killer unit. Like, if you don't know how to do with Wraith Guard, you're just going to suddenly lose entire squads. Should be a Singularity going off right here. I'm going to pull in some heretic models. I actually got a ni pretty nice pull. I thought being in the middle right there, it might not pull in enough, not do enough damage. But it did a decent amount of damage. Meanwhile, the Plague Champion goes down. Just way too much damage. We're getting to the point in the game where there's a lot of damage. Things are about to get crazy. 
We've got the we've got a big push from ten thousand trying to push things down, and if he can move the dreadnought in, he can uh, take down the heavy bolter turret. Even the chaos predator, which I felt was a good idea, is kind of struggling. We do see a imperial abyss, which ultimately did not do that much. The only thing the force commander did manage to walk through the center rings. Uh, but he just has so much health that it, it didn't matter. Uh, Imperial Abyss, actually a very, very tough nuke to use, and in my opinion, not one of the greatest nukes. It has extremely high damage potential, but only in a small, concentrated area, which is inside those center rings. Outside of the center rings, it's very, very weak, uh, and it can be hard to actually place it so that your opponent stays or gets inside those center rings. The, the ideal case is you get some squad to retreat through those center rings. Um, but that depends a lot on their retreat path. So 2-1 to one in favor of the red team. They're looking poised to take this. 221 to 57 with the blue team not currently having any VPs. They've got to act fast or this game will be done for them. They will probably get this VP right here, which is actually the yeah, which is their natural. And it looks like their best chance might be it. It looks like their best chance is to go for this. But even then, I'm not sure. Maybe actually, it's not appearing like their best chance anymore. They force off the plasma devs, but there's a squad of devastators behind them. We're gonna see grenades on retreat. That grenade, I feel like, was correctly placed, but I think these Dire Avengers are just level. They have that passive damage resistance. I'm assuming that still exists. <gasps> Here's an Eldritch Storm. And... Now, the problem with that Eldritch is that without any follow-up, it may not actually doing anything significant. Because the Dreadnought should eventually... Well, the Dreadnought will eventually um, become unstunned. Looks like he's setting up the Bright Lance... But the Bright Lance is also unsupported, so 2 to 1 in favor of the blue team. And the Bright Lance doesn't even have sight. It was. That Dreadnought was in the firing arc, but the Bright Lance didn't have sight, so it didn't shoot. So unfortunately, n neither of the nukes that we've seen so far have really, in my opinion, have not had a big impact. Looks like we might have seen a squad wiped here. And triple whipple nipple slipple. Yeah, I don't know. He's not looking like he's in good shape. All he's got are two Chaos Space Marine squads and a Chaos Predator. That's going to necessitate a heretic purchase because he needs to be able to repair the Predator. Because for the most part, that's really the best unit that he's got at the moment. And that's the only one that can really even potentially um, put him back in the game along with Newt Newt. Newt Newt who... We are in the um, ultimately kind of lacking... I don't know. Well, but here's the back cap. This will probably be it, unless... Yeah, I, right now I'm looking at this as probably being game. Because we see... I don't think an answer for these Seer Counselors is going to come fast enough. We see Chaos Space Marines right here. I'm going to fight in melee with the Howling Banshees. And it looks like they are going to win that fight. And I would say that definitely comes with the help of the, the ability that they get from having an aspiring champion. They... Well... Yeah, this is going to have to be it in favor of the, the red team. Yeah. So triple whipple nipple slipple calls the GG. Oh, let's see, what is that, another Eldritch? And Eldritch just for fun, because the game's in. Maybe you have to catch something. 